All right, hey everyone. So I just wanted to uh, recap what we talked about in class today uh, in case anyone missed it. Um, in part because I think I finally figured out the way to talk about limits um, to really help out. So, all right, my opening prompt is by using values near x equals zero. So here's x equals zero, but I cut it out. We don't care about x equals zero. I just want to be near x equals zero. What is your, and I could actually add the word best, what's your best prediction for g of zero? Okay, so you can look at your graph here and you can say, well, here's one, here's two, here's three. Um, you know, it sure looks to me like we're gonna hit four. Okay, and, and so you might say, it looks like g of zero is four. And when I say looks like, what I mean is that's our prediction. That's our best prediction. I'm not saying g of zero is four, right? If I did not write these words, that's a very different statement, but I did write those words. It looks like g of zero is four. We're talking about predictions here. And that's what I asked for. So this would be full credit, right? That's correct. And so now we don't use the word predictions in mathematics. Uh, we use the word limit. So uh, we say, I guess the, the quotes should actually go a little lower. They should be around here. We say the limit as x goes to zero of g of x is four, okay? And the way we write that is like this. So the limit as x goes to zero of g of x is four. And you know what this is saying is our best prediction, prediction for g of zero is four. Right, so as the input, as x gets closer and closer to zero, it looks like g of x gets closer and closer to four. So as I, right? So, okay, this is the whole idea, trying to predict something when maybe you don't have all the data, right? Okay, so limits can depend on direction. In other words, predictions depend on direction. So same function g, I just kind of zoomed in, right? So we're looking at this arc here, and notice I never included x equals one. Uh, that's also cut off. So here we are. And now, um, and also you can see here, I, I don't include <laughs> zero still, right? I continue to cut out information and I cut out information, um, but we can zoom in on that spot. And so look, I want x to approach one from the left. So I don't care about numbers bigger than one. I'm coming in from the left, less than one. And now I want, what's the best prediction for g of one? So the way we write this in mathematics is like this. The limit for g of x as x goes to one, and this little superscript negative, it's, a, it's to mean like from the left, from the negative side of the real numbers, okay? And I think it's reasonable to say that's three. And you know, even though there's this gap here, um, there's not just a vertical gap, there's a little horizontal gap. And so if I zoom in and let myself zoom in a lot, you know, I can always kind of zoom in and leave a little bit of a gap because I'm always removing some information. But if I zoomed in again, I promise I would just let this go closer and closer to three. I'm trying to make it clear that our best prediction is three, okay? And all throughout, something I haven't talked about, but let's go back. Um, you know, this is a hard thing to define, okay? And so I'm giving you an idea of a limit. But if in the back of your mind you're thinking, how would I actually write down a, a definition? It's tricky. It really is. And so similarly, you know, we can talk about how would you write down the definition for this idea? And it's tricky, but whatever, let's table that. So this is a limit from the left and it has this little superscript. We can also talk about limits from the right. So approaching x equals one uh, from the right, what y value do we approach? And so now I'm finally revealing, here's the big reveal this was the function g of x all along, right? And I kind of cut out the part zero and I cut out the part at one and I've shown you bits and pieces of it. But okay, apparently this is g of x. And here's what we just finished talking about. We talked about how if you approach x equals one from the left, so in fact, x goes to one from the left and that's left, right? Then it looks like the y value you approach. Oh, this is not what I want. That's weird. Oh, it's because I tap. Damn it. Do that. Boom. Then it looks like the y value approach is three, right? Sorry, I have dogs playing where I'm at. Okay. Um, so same idea. If you approach it one from the right, it looks like the y value is two. And, and one way to think of it is that you're a little bug that lives on this graph. 
And so your x coordinate, so first off, the, the location of this bug has an x and a y coordinate. Your x coordinate is a little bit bigger than one. And this is one of the ways we like to write that in calculus. So it's one plus a little bit, okay? And so then your y coordinate, because you lie on the graph, so y has to equal g of x, my x coordinate is this whole expression, so I plug that into my function, right? But okay, there we are. Um, and you know, don't worry so much about the symbols as the idea, but I do want to kind of let them go together. So um, as this bug continues to crawl, right? Bug, whatever, and it's crawling. Uh, that x position is getting closer and closer to one, and the y position is getting closer and closer to two. So I hope this idea of what's our best prediction for g of x when we look near one, but we're a little bit bigger than it, right? So if I had zoomed in and not let you see what happens at two, and I just kind of see, okay, what's happening? Where am I going? Sorry. If I don't let you see this value like I did before, then we would say, well, our best prediction is that we're going to end up at one comma two. That's what it looks like is happening. And that's correct, it, but it's just a prediction. I'm not asking you what g of one is, right? Limits don't care. It turns out that g of one is three, right? That's what that filled in dot, but I never asked you that and I don't care. I'm just asking you to predict based on limited values and the, the limitation is written here, right? So x a little bit bigger than one is stuff like 1.1 or 1.001. It's anything that's just a little bit bigger than one. And where does it look like g of x is going? All right, so limits are different than asking about values at a point. I never asked about g of one. Maybe I should write that, right? I never asked for g of one. I'm just asking about predictions. And again, you know, it's a weird thing to define, but we'll table that. Okay, so predictions are not evaluations. I'm sorry all this is filled in. It's because we just had class and I figured instead of just posting the notes, we'll, we'll do a quick recap. So look, if, if I ask for the limit of f of x, and here's f of x, all right? So the limit as x goes to two of f of x. Oh, you know what? I do need to say one more thing up here. So sorry. Oh, we'll revisit it. Who cares? Um, nope, I should say it now. Sorry. So let me make some room. Uh, notice, oh, I guess I should make room down here. Originally, I have it coming up later on, so we're going to revisit this notion I'm about to say. But since I revealed the graph of G, maybe I should put the notion here. And it's the idea of a limit not existing. So if asked for the limit as x goes to 1 of g of x, uh, this does not exist, okay? And the reason is because if I approach 1 from the left, I get 3. Sorry, if I approach x equals 1 from the left, then g of some number really, really close to 1, so here is g of 0.99 maybe, right? So this is a number really close to 1, but a little bit less. It's about three. And I get closer and closer to three as this input gets closer and closer to one. So um, this limit is three, whereas the limit from the right is two. So when someone asks about a limit and there is no superscript, no superscript, then we need, then we need the limit as you approach from the right to equal the limit as you approach from the left for g for this overall limit, the limit as x goes to one of g of x to exist. Let me say this differently. If someone says what is your best prediction for g of 1? So here's the idea, right? Someone says predict g of 1. Okay, and the word predict means you're not allowed to just plug in 1. So we have to imagine this section of the graph is removed. 
just like I did up here, right? When I took away zero. So imagine we cut out the strip at one. Well, then what do you see? You see two wildly different behaviors, right? On the one hand, it looks like maybe it's three. And on the other hand, it looks like maybe it's two. And I, honestly, I just feel like I can't make a prediction. I really don't know. That's the idea. That's it. So look, on the one hand, when I approach from the right, that limit was two. But on the other hand, when I approach from the left, that limit was three. And so what's my best prediction for g of one? I don't know, right? And that's because I'm not converging on one number. So rather than say, oh, two or three and allowing a set of answers, we just say it doesn't exist, okay? We just throw it away. Don't worry about it. Um, so, all right, we'll revisit that. But just for now, I figured I'd do that because, 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 um, I implicitly use that idea here. So if someone asks, what's the limit of this function as x goes to 2, uh, it could be written like this. And then our first step is to substitute in what that function is. Well, up until now, I've been showing you graphs. So what's the whole idea is you imagine cutting out 2. So um, uh, we're not allowed, not allowed to plug in x equals 2, okay? Not allowed. So what do you do? You plug in stuff close to 2. And here's some data that you might get back, right? And here it looks like we're headed to 4 if our x values are a little bit bigger than 2. And here it looks like we're headed to 4 if they're a little bit less than 2. So I think it's reasonable to say the limit looks like it's 4, okay? Whereas if you just plug in 2, if you say what's f of 2, it's undefined. If you plug in, you get 0 over 0, and I don't know how to define that, okay? It is undefined. And now what's going on is 2 is not in the domain of f. Um, you can't actually plug it in. But nonetheless, we can talk about limits. Limits, in some sense, are nicer behaved because it's just sort of like, oh, what, what should you be, right? It feels like this should exist, and it feels like it should be 4, right? So why do we have this weird paradoxical phenomena where something is undefined, but it also really looks like it should be four. Okay, so what's happening and the answer is cancellation. Um, now, before we go in that, let me just, well, uh, we'll have to come back. This is what happens when I record after class. All right, so let's do simple examples of this. So uh, the graph f of x equals x divided by x. You probably want to say this is one, but that's not true, right? What is true, let's write it like this, f of x, it turns out it's a piecewise function. It's equal to 1 when x is not 0. Because if x is not 0, you can just cancel the x's. But in fact, it is undefined. Undefined when x equals 0. So here's what's happening. We're just, this is 1 when x is not 0, but it's 0 when x is 0. And so this idea of limit, what does it look like f of 0 should be? Again, you know, I just imagine being this little bug, and I'm just minding my own business, and I'm crawling along, and this little bug has an x and a y coordinate, and that x coordinate is going to head towards 0, and that y coordinate, man, that just stays at 1. And so <laughs> as x goes to 0, man, it looks like the y coordinate should really just be 1 right there. And that's this idea. What's my prediction? My prediction is 1. And I would, again, just encourage you, like, just imagine I delete this strip, right? If I don't give you that information, just like how we began this talk, and I just say, what is your best prediction for f of x? You're probably going to say 1, and that's correct. I think we'd all agree that's correct. You're working with what you have, right? And you're not allowed to use x equals 1, so you use everything else. All right, let's look at another cancellation. So... Um, here, I made it a little bit harder, and I could have written the same function like this, right? I could have distributed the x. But I want to emphasize that there's a cancellation happening. And if these cancel, then really h of x just kind of looks like the function x plus 2. Just like how f of x really looked like the function 1, right? h of x looks like the function x plus 2. And so as x gets closer and closer to 0, 
h of x gets closer and closer to 0 plus 2, also known as 2. Right? And we could see that, like, here's a graph. Um, so what's happening is h of x is this, which, I mean, look, I could, I could make this an equal sign. This expression is equal to that expression when x is not equal to 0. And conveniently, 0 is the spot that I'm cutting out, right? I'm removing this information. So all I get to do, I get to play pretend where, let's put this back in. I don't show you, and I don't show you, but I know that value is 2. And I ask, geez, what does it look like I'm heading towards, right? I get my little bug. Whatever. It looks like I'm heading towards 2, towards y equals 2, right? These are these are g values, the output values. So they're y values, they're output values. Um, but in fact, right, as written, this is not true. What is true, when I say it looks like I'm heading, oh, what is true is that as x goes to 0, g of x looks like it goes to 2, okay? That's the whole idea. And yeah, like, look, when, when x is not 0, if x was 0. 0.0001, and I plug that in for x all around, then these two would cancel. So this equality is true, provided x is not 0. And in fact, this idea is going to be the general way we attack these problems. Okay? So, um, ah, we'll come back to that slide. Let's revisit this function where we had the table for before. And let's talk about the technique we just used. So there's sort of two steps. You sort of factor the top. Um, uh, let's add or bottom. Okay. And then you cancel stuff. And then you take the limit, but whatever. So let's begin. Let's do step one. So we want the limit as x goes to 2. No, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. This is equal to... And I have to rewrite the limit because I'm, I have to continue to say I'm taking a prediction, right? If I don't write this and I just say this is equal to x minus 2, x plus 2 over x minus 2, I have not done step one. Like, this equality is not true. This side is talking about a prediction and this side is, well, this side's a function, actually. This, this has no x plugged in, but here we're talking about x going to 2. Like, they're totally different ideas. So in order to write the equal sign that I'm erasing that arrow for, I have to continue to write limit. So, ah, now, now I have equality. Okay. So here's me doing step one. I'm, I'm factoring. Okay, that's step one. All right, step two is cancel. Great, so this is equal to, oh, I have to rewrite limit because it's that idea, and I'm going to cancel those. That's me doing step two. So x plus two. All right, now here's the whole idea. I'm thinking of a number. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I will say that, gosh, this number is super close to two, okay? I'm not telling you what it is, but, you know, it's really, 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 really close. I mean, just imagine how close you can get to two. It's closer than that. It's so friggin' close. Okay, and now I'm going to add two to it. Can you tell me... What is this result close to? And I claim it's 4. <laughs> right? That, that should make sense. If this was 2.01, well, you know, gosh, this is close to 4. This is, this is that. That's, that's what's happening here. As x gets closer and closer and closer to 2, then x plus 2, that's getting closer and closer and closer to 4. Right? Because this part's getting close to 2, so add 2, get close to 4. That's it. All right. So here's our general approach for when we get problems like this. We're going to factor. And look, I could have given you um, the reciprocal of this. I could talk about the limit as x goes to 2 of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4. Same technique, right? That's why I added this or bottom. You're going to factor. This is the limit as x goes to 2. Sorry, my limit 
typically when I do a homework, I just do a little squiggle like that. Um, I will accept full credit if you do a squiggly L with an I dot. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's factor it. X minus two, X minus two. Oh, X plus two. Oh. Cancel those. And it turns out this limit is one fourth because the bottom is going to four and you know now we have a one on top. So that's the general technique. All right. Um, let me finish this talk about do not exist and do exist. This is when I was originally planning on doing it, and clearly, you know, I, oh, I'm terrible at planning ahead. All right, so predictions may not be possible, uh, but we don't want to say that. We want to use math words. So instead we say limits may not exist. Okay, so look, right? If, if you said, what's your best prediction for G of 1, and I cover this up, Good luck telling me what your best prediction for G of 1 is, right? Maybe you'll say it's 2.5, but it's really hard to do because we're going to 3 and we're going to 2. So because the these two so-called left-hand and right-hand limits don't agree, which is to say they're not equal, we say the limit as x goes 1 of G of x does not exist. The limit as x goes to 1 of G of x does not exist. And that's because there's a jump discontinuity. Uh, okay, another reason limits might not exist are crazy oscillations. This is much more rare. This is just kind of, we throw it out at students. Um, so this function, sine of 1 over x, it squiggles like crazy as x goes to 0. And I could zoom in on this as much as I want on Desmos. It'll always kind of look the same. It'll just sort of like squiggle like mad crazy around here, okay? And it is impossible to pin down the y value, the prediction for sine of one over zero, which look, that that's undefined, but remember, it, we're never actually allowed to plug in x equals zero, right? So when I say prediction for sine of one over zero, okay, this is this is a misnomer. It's a contradiction in speech. It's um, I'm trying to get an idea across, but what I'm saying is made up, right? I'm actually not allowed, not allowed to plug in zero. We don't want this. What we're talking about is the prediction of the y value of the graph of sine of 1 over x as x goes to 0. But you can see, like, you really can't pin it down. It's just somewhere between plus or minus 1. It's somewhere in here. But, ooh, baby, that oscillates so much, I can't tell you one number. So we say the limit is, it doesn't exist. Okay. Um, limits can be unbounded. So uh, infinity is not a number. It's just a concept of growth. Okay, unbounded growth. And... Uh, as x goes to 0 from the right, so here's 0, I'm going to approach it from the right. If I live on my graph, whoa, I blow up, right? So my y value is going to infinity. It's just going to grow unbounded, so to speak. Now, if I approach 0 from the left, whew, my y value is going to negative infinity. It grows unbounded, but in the negative direction. And these two numbers aren't the same. They're about as far apart as you can get. So we just say the limit as x goes to 0 doesn't exist. We cannot pin down one single prediction. Okay? All right. That's the idea of limits. Um, try your web work for some additional problems. And now, just to throw this out, let's look at the actual definition of a limit. So this comes up really quick in the textbook, section 2.1. So, uh, All right, so the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l uh, means we can make f of x as close to l as we like by taking x sufficiently close but not equal to a, right? And the more you think about it, the more you'll realize this really is saying l is the best. So best is this idea of as close to, as close to, as we like. That's what the word best is saying. Um, best prediction. And best prediction for what? Well, it's the best prediction for uh, f of a. Whoop. 
when we cannot just plug in x equals a, okay? And hey, cannot just plug in x equals a, cannot just plug in x equals a, taking x sufficiently close, ah, but in fact, let me back this up, sorry, but not equal to, that's that part. Okay, so now what's this uh, sufficiently close business? Let's go back to the graph that started it all, all right? In fact, let's do this. Uh, where are you? Where are you? Here you are. Okay. So um, the limit as x goes to 0 of g of x, right? This is g of x, is equal to 4. Okay. Now the limit as x goes to 0 of g of x is not equal to 3.8. All right? So this idea is that like, maybe here's 3.8. Let's get a thinner marker, sorry. Maybe here's 3.8, right? 3.8 is not the best prediction because like, okay, it's true that there's two x values, right? Uh, what is this? Maybe like x is, so this bar is x equals a half. Um, here, let me show you, sorry. Here is that bar, it's x equals a half. And it's pretty close to it. So maybe this is like uh, x is about 0.4, right? So um, we we can find x values where you know, g of 0.4, that, that's like a 3.8. But I don't care about 0.4. I care about 0, right? And so like I want my y value, like, well, I hope that's clear. All right, let, let me say one other thing now. Sorry. So... Even though I touch 3.8, I don't care about what I touch. I care about what I'm headed towards. And then the idea is I need to head there and stay there. So um, I head towards 4. And in fact, like there's a whole region where as I zoom in more and more, I only get closer and closer. I never, I never, it'd be different if my graph sort of did this. Whoop. And here, whoop, right? Where maybe the scale, maybe this is like 0.0001, and then this is minus 0.0001. So um, instead of <laughs> instead of just approaching four, I like suddenly dip down, right? That's not happening here. We're not suddenly jumping further away. As we zoom in, as we zoom in, we get closer. So that's that's what's going on here. So taking x sufficiently close to a, it's saying like, as you zoom in, you continue to get closer. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, I think there's a real discussion that can be had about whether or not this exact definition is needed for this class. Um, and whether or not we're just sort of like, as mathematicians, we love this definition. We hold it near and dear to our hearts. It's so hard to come up with a definition like this. And mathematically, it has a purpose. But for science, like, I don't know about you, but I was told in grade school, or not grade school, sorry, in like high school, that a continuous function is something you draw without picking up your pencil. And then it also has to pass the vertical line test, right? And like, that's true. But it turns out, let me give you one more thing in this video. So to say f of x is continuous, and then this needs to happen at a spot, so at x equals a. So like maybe right here is x equals a, and then like here's the graph of f of x. And so we're saying right here, my function's continuous. Now this function that I drew happens to be continuous everywhere I drew it, right? Because I drew it without picking up my pencil. But Let's just focus right here. Let's just focus at x equals a. What does it mean to say f of x is continuous there? It means the best prediction for f of x as x gets closer and closer to a is f of a. So to me, um, a better word than continuous would be to say f of x is predictable. Predictable at x equals a. I would, I would swap out these two things. 
And the whole idea, what does predictable mean? Well, it means if you delete this information, and so I don't technically know what f of a is, I can still figure it out because it's equal to the limit. So, you know, if we go back to some of these other ones, so x over x, this function is not continuous at x equals 0. It's not even defined at x equals 0. And that's because, um, oh, sorry, sorry. I should have added more. Oh, God, I should have added more. You need to be predictable at the spot and uh, in that prediction, uh, f is predictable x equals a, and it's f of a. Okay. So uh, why did I add that? Sorry, sorry. This idea, f of a, f of a, versus the prediction for what it should be, predictable at a. Okay. So where it looks like my function is going, where it looks like my function is going, is where I go. That's the whole idea of continuity. So your function might look like it's going somewhere, but not actually go there because it's not defined there. Or <laughs> uh, your function uh, might look like it's going somewhere. So like here in the g of x case, it looks like g of 0 is 4, but sorry, my stylus is like acting up right now g of 0 is 1. So my prediction disagrees with the real value. My function is not predictable. So I guess that's why I originally had just what I had about um, function is predictable. God, this style. Okay, predictable at x equals a. To me, what it means to be predictable is exactly this. Where it looks like you're going, looks like is where you go versus your destination, right? So anyway, um, but that's the same as if I can draw something without picking up my pencil, where my pencil is headed is where it needs to go. Otherwise, I have to jump, right? Because, oh shit, I'm headed here, but I have to be here. So, like, this is a perfectly good definition for life when you're dealing with, okay, this would be called a connected space. But the thing is, like, in math, we want to start to break these rules and really get at, like, what makes something continuous. But that's different than what we need to talk about with all of you. And so sort of having these notions in, like, an intuitive way, you know, that, I don't know. Anyway, I think this is a discussion that we had here, but it's not the point. So anyway, all right, I'll see you all next time when we talk about instantaneous rate of change. And, uh, oh, that's this whole slide. Sorry about that. Not whole slide. This section. So... Um, this this whole limit business, it may have felt silly, right? Like, at the end of the day, we canceled something, and it's like, well, why did that have to happen? Why did we have to have x over x? Why couldn't we just have one, right? And, like, it is kind of silly. These are things called removable singularities. You don't need to know that word. But it just means that, like, this issue doesn't have to be there. Um, And, right, yeah, singularity, it's a trouble spot. Removable doesn't have to exist, right? Uh, but they appear every time we start to talk about slope. Okay, not necessarily every time, but I'm exaggerating for dramatic effect. And that's the whole point of section 2.2. So I'll see you next time we're talking about that.